Whilst they do occur, lava lakes are an incredibly rare phenomenon, and the belief many have regarding the existence of them occurring inside the crater of every single active volcano on our planet is unfortunately incorrect. There are only eight known persistent lava lakes that exist on our planet to our knowledge, some of which display intermittent behaviour, with past volcanic lakes occurring for a while at some volcanic lakes, only to eventually disappear beneath the earth without returning. In this video, we're going to cover everything you need to know about lava lakes, from the unique and specific conditions that form them, to the composition and conditions that are required for them to exist at all, and why their existence is so rare in general. We'll then take a look at the current active lakes that exist in the present day, and get some insight into both their location and magmatic makeup. If you like this content and want to see more videos like this one, consider hitting the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to be notified of each time I upload a new video, and consider clicking that like button as it really helps the channel out. Every rock on Earth contains a certain amount of silica dioxide within its overall composition. A low level of silica is among the most important aspect required to form a lava lake or lava river. A low silica content creates a very runny, almost watery type of magma, and as the silica level rises, the viscosity of the magma becomes thicker and unable to flow or travel much at all. Stronger, more explosive volcanic eruptions contain a high silica level, and volcanic eruptions that are more effusive, with minimal or little to no explosive characteristics, such as the many that exist in Hawaii or Iceland, all contain low silica levels, ranging from 45% up to around a 60% mark. Extrusive igneous rocks are formed at the crust's surface as a result of the partial melting of rocks within the mantle and crust. The term extrusive igneous rock basically just refers to volcanic rocks that have been exploded upon the surface, with intrusive igneous rocks meaning volcanic rocks that weren't exploded upon the surface and instead cooled down, crystallizing back into its rock state, freezing it beneath the surface of the earth, sometimes within its magma chamber, and other times in a dike or conduit that it was using to ascend towards the surface from its former home deep beneath the earth. Lava is the term used to describe magma that has surfaced, whereas magma is a term used to describe molten rocks that haven't erupted upon the surface yet and are still trapped within the earth. The behaviour of either of these depends mostly upon its viscosity level. The viscosity of magma itself is determined by several different factors, ranging from the amount of silica content to the temperature, composition and amount of crystal content it contains. This is very important to keep in mind for several reasons, to explain the rarity of lava lakes for one, as well as to explain why certain rocks can create lava lakes whilst others simply can't. So both intrusive and extrusive igneous rocks are classified into four categories, of which exist three categories that are the most relevant for this video, known as mafic, intermediate and falsic. The fourth category is known as ultramafic, which I intend on making a video about as this classification deserves a video of its own. Mafic rocks are made up of silica levels that are below 50% and are rich in magnesium and iron. Common mafic rocks include basalt, diabase and gabbro. Temperatures above 1300 degrees Celsius are required to melt mafic rocks into its magmatic state, and this higher temperature also contributes to its more fluid viscosity. Intermediate rocks contain a intermediate level of silica compared to mafic or felsic rocks, with this level generally being between 52 to 63% silica dioxide. Common intermediate rocks are andesite and dacite, among many others. A temperature of between 800 to 1000 degrees Celsius is required to melt intermediate rocks into their magmatic state. Felsic rocks contain the highest level of silicon dioxide and are enriched with aluminium, sodium and potassium. Some common felsic rocks are granite, rhyolite and obsidian. Felsic magma exists between 650 to 800 degrees Celsius. This makes it over 500 degrees cooler than molten basalt. All of the elements we just covered makes the magmatic form of rocks within these three categories different in their behaviour, viscosity and the way they erupt. 
It comes to no surprise that lava lakes are formed by eruptions that release predominantly mafic material. This doesn't mean these lakes are limited to existing in a state predominantly made up of only mafic material, however. And acidic lava lakes have occurred too, such as what is found at the Chilean volcano Villarica. Andesite is an intermediate rock that has a silica dioxide level of around 60%. This is probably the highest silica dioxide level capable of producing a lava lake, with any higher producing lava that is too viscous to flow. There have been some rather rare and unique types of malted rocks that have created lava lakes too, such as the phonolytic lava lake found within Mount Erebus in Antarctica, which is composed of an uncommon extrusive rock called phonolite a relatively low silica type of rock that falls within the intermediate category and produces the most incredible metallic sound when it is struck against a solid object. Check this out. So how do these lakes form to begin with? Well, there are three different ways a lava lake can form. The first is that they can form atop a new vent that's been continuously erupting lava for several weeks, as this type of eruption constructs a crater that sits higher than the surrounding ground, trapping the lava within it and forming a lake. The second is when enough lava from one or multiple vents erupts inside a depression or crater and releases enough lava to partially fill it. The third is, unsurprisingly, when lava pours into an already existing crater or broad depression. The lakes themselves exhibit a wide range of different behaviours, ranging from those that are cyclical, such as what was observed in 1983 at Kilauea, when lava would rapidly drain into the volcanic conduit before erupting forth again a few minutes later and refilling the lake, only to repeat this process time and time again to lakes that have a constantly circulating steady state of lava being released and taken back in, that allows the existence of the lake to remain in place for very long periods of time. The defining factors that influence how a lava lake will behave are the pressure within the reservoir, any type of exolution that occurs, as well as the decompression of gas bubbles within the conduit or the exolution of the gas bubbles within the magma chamber itself. The interactions of these effects can create either a steady state recirculating lake or a lake level that periodically rises and then falls. The rarity of these lakes lies within the multiple specific variables required for these types of lakes to form at all. A lava lake requires a perfect balance of magma being released to magma that is being reabsorbed back into the volcanic conduit. Otherwise, the lava will eventually cool down and solidify or overflow and travel only to then cool down and solidify. Since the majority of volcanic eruptions that exist on our planet occur within the ocean, those on land that are basalt in nature need these conditions to exist in a perfect balance. And as you can imagine, it's quite difficult to achieve the specific requirements needed. A perfect, cyclical, continuous and steady intake and outtake ratio of lava from the volcanic magma chamber is by far the hardest variable to achieve and is why these lakes would normally be intermittent if present at all. One type of eruption that would have created vast and complex molten lava river systems, as well as massive and numerous lava lakes, over an extended period of time continuously, would be flood basaltic eruptions, such as what occurred during the Siberian Traps eruption, which was a 1 million long continuous volcanic eruption that spewed forth predominantly fluid mafic magma that travelled unbelievable distances and possibly triggered one of the worst extinction events to ever occur on our planet that being the Great Dying. I've already made a video on the Siberian Traps, and I'll make sure to include that in the description box down below, in case you're interested in watching it. So, now that we have a good deal of knowledge about lava lakes and rivers, let's take a look at the lakes that have existed persistently, or at least near persistently, for the last few decades. It's worth mentioning the number may have dropped, but I'll get into that more in a moment. Urtaal in Ethiopia is a predominantly basaltic lava lake and has existed for over a century. Ambrim in Vanuatu held two lava lakes in total. Unfortunately, both of these were affected by an earthquake in December 2018, which was powerful enough to collapse the two craters that contained both lava lakes and buried them underneath the rubble. They haven't surfaced again since that day. Both lakes consisted of molten basalt. 
Mount Yasser, which is also in Vanuatu, is located on a different island south of the two now buried lava lakes that were in Ambrim. This lake contains molten basaltic andesite and is in the intermediate category with a magmatic composition containing 56% silica dioxide. Kilauea's lake on Big Island, Hawaii, contained an active lava lake for much of the time before 1924 and was the site of several eruptions during the 20th century. The crater again contained an active lava lake between 2008 and 2018, usually fluctuating between 20 to 150 metres below the crater floor, though at times the lava lake rose high enough to spill onto the crater floor. Kilauea is very obviously mafic in its chemistry and erupts molten basalt. Mount Niragongo, within the Democratic Republic of the Congo, contains an intermittent lava lake that is about 2 kilometres wide. Niragongo's lava lake has at times been the most voluminous known lava lake in recent history. The depth of the lake varies considerably. A maximum elevation of the lava lake was recorded at about 3,250 metres before the January 1977 eruption. Niragongo's lava flows are actually quite dangerous and unique because they occur in a stratovolcano and they have been known to race downhill at speeds up to 100 kilometres per hour. Mount Michael on Saunders Island, which is located in the South Sandwich Island, is an active volcanic mountain that is 805 metres in height, and was the volcano that in 2019 was discovered to hold a near persistent lava lake, after decades worth of satellite imagery was analysed and revealed this to be a fact. It contains mafic to intermediate lava. Mount Erebus on Ross Island in Antarctica is where the phonolytic lava lake exists, and is one of the few volcanoes with a persistent and long-lived lava lake. So although eight lava lakes have been persistent for decades, only five lava lakes exist in the present day because of the disappearance of the two lakes in Vanuatu following the earthquake that occurred in 2018, with the third being Kilauea's notoriously long-lived lava lake, which disappeared following recent volcanic activity. Lava lakes aren't confined to existing only on Earth though, and three lava lakes have been observed on Jupiter's moon Io. I'm going to be documenting these in depth in a future video, so if that interests you, keep an eye out for it. To surmise, these lakes are quite rare, and it's understandable why after taking a look into the conditions required, not only for their formation, but also for them to be able to sustain their existence for long periods of time. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, it really helps the channel out. And if you'd like to see more content just like this, hit that subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of every new upload. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you all real soon.